I'm really excited about today's feature release by Notion, which I've been wanting for forever. Before this update, Notion could group database properties only for the select or multi-select properties and not by any other property like date, formula or relation. So with this grouping feature, you can control what you see horizontally like swim lanes as well as vertically inside of the views. And this is especially useful when you use something like Kanban. And you can use this within each one of the views, tables, galleries, the Kanban itself, the list view, the timeline view, etc. Besides all of this, you also have full manual control on the order of the columns and subgroup them further inside of the Kanban view. This video is broken down into three parts. Number one, introduce you to the new feature which introduces grouping with a toggle button. Number two, show you the group by and the subgroup by and can work within the Kanban, which is also called the board view. And number three, use it to create a weekly calendar view, which makes this really powerful. There is still one feature that's missing and I will talk about it later in the video and share how you can work around it. So let's dive right in. After you've created a database the way you need it to for different database types like the table view, the timeline view, the Kanban view or the list view for example, you can click on the three dots on the right hand side and you will notice a new menu item called groups. By clicking on it you will find different selections to pick the group by property and by clicking on that you can virtually see all the properties pop up. Depending on the view you select, you may see additional options pop up, especially in the board view, which we will dive into detail further. You will notice here that you can also get the option to hide empty groups, and that may be desirable if you do not want to get distracted. The database example I'm going to use is the script that I created for this video. The group by feature that I will be using for this are the scenes or the chapters for this video. On selecting this, you will immediately notice one database has now been split up into many rows, each showing the records for that scene alone, without the need for creating any additional filters. Now you can arrange the visual groups in the order and even hide groups from view. You will also notice that each group has a toggle button conveniently located to hide those specific records when not needed. So when I'm writing that scene, I don't need to get distracted with other records from other scenes. If you go to the subgroups, you will notice a number there. If you click on it, it will give you a number of options of what you would like to see. For example, if you are looking at grouped checklists, you can count checked items. Since I have a number of checkboxes in this table, it will give me the options to display. If you create an additional record within the group, the group also pre-populates using the group filter feature. So in the scene that I'm writing, I can also rearrange the dialogue by pulling the information from another scene into this one, in which case the scene gets automatically renamed. I can also reshuffle the dialogues within each one of the scenes without impacting them just like before. So you really don't have to enter that specific property once again. The filter and sort criteria apply to all groups across the same database as earlier. So Kanban already had a group by feature and you could group by select or multi-select for example. Now you can create a Kanban board by any property practically. You will notice a color box surrounding the column which you can turn on or off. So when you group by another property, say a formula, which extracts the day of the week, it will ask you whether you want the exact string or in alphabetical order. Alphabetical chooses the first letter while the exact string chooses the entire string. You can also use the group by feature for breaking down the group further into another subgroup. You can choose whether it should be manual instead of alphabetical. And that allows you to sort the days of the week according to your preference. So you could have the weekdays first and the weekend next to each other. Or you could have the week beginning with a Saturday or a Sunday for example. 
However, if you change the group by selection at any point in time, it will lose memory of such adjustments and you will have to start all over again. If you have classified the tasks within a calendar by type, you can see task group by project, non-recurring, specific day, birthday reminders, meetings, etc. inside the weekly view. For every calendar item in my GTD system, I have them date stamped, whether it's set as recurring or non-recurring and all of that hands off from my Google Calendar. The day of the week is extracted using a Notion formula and that is used for the main group. I have set a filter to include records from today till up to a week so that I have information set only for one rolling week. Additionally, I have formulae to validate today's date and then stamp it with a purple dot. Add the date and the time if any time is specified in the Google Calendar. And if no time has been specified, it marks it off as an all-day event. Now within the type property that's available in my database, I have classified my records into projects, recurring and non-recurring tasks, bill payments, birthdays, anniversaries, etc. So I get a rolling weekly calendar with my Kanban board or without groups, depending on how I want to see it. So you might be asking, so what's missing? So you can group by any field except rollups. The way to get around this is to use a formula that copies the rollup field to that column and now you can do it for this as well. In addition to this, you will also notice that you cannot have the group by function for the calendar view, but you can do it for the timeline view. To pick up the GTD template with all the new features, click on the link below from where you can buy it. Existing GTD version 2 with API buyers will get notified to refresh their template for free. If you're not yet part of this community, do consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay notified of new videos. If you like this video, consider sharing it with your friends. Stay safe, stay healthy, peace.